Hey everybody, how's it going? Okay, so I uh, I do videos and I did an Amityville Horror video about five years ago. Got pretty some pretty good hits and I ended up taking it down for a while. And um, obviously the subject never goes away. I've watched a lot of your videos on YouTube that you guys have made all over the country, different parts of the world on the Amityville Horror. And um, it's just something that's that's uh you know part of our lives and uh we don't really know everything that happened with that and we may never know um but as the mystery continues but there is some information that i had found um that a lot of people didn't know and even though it's 10 years old i still wanted to bring this information back to everybody um that was out there but it wasn't really that publicated um, for most of you YouTubers to um, know this information. So this right here, this is an article. It's called Savi's Corner. And in you can see Thursday, May 27th, 2010. This is archived. You may go look it up yourself. Uh, Will Savi was, is a, like a journalist. And he, uh, way back about 2010, the house had been up for sale. Now, I had just recently looked... And I know it was up for sale in 16, and I just went back here on Google, and it says the Amityville house for sale in 2021. As of 2020, the house is occupied by a buyer who bought the house in 2017, which is the most recent purchase um, of another owner. I think it's been about six or seven owners now since, obviously, the tragedy, and then the Lutz moving in out after 28 days. There's been about six or seven owners of the house, and the house was listed on the market in 2016 for 850,000. Uh, and the realtors.com, and they moved in in 17. So that's what I found there. It's 112 Ocean, now 108 Ocean, right? Okay, but what I wanted to share with you is that Savi wrote this article. I'm going to read parts of it, but um, that the, when the realtors went in to look at the house, they had an experience. Um, so right here it says the infamous, here let me go ahead and make this bigger, and you guys can go read this yourself. Uh, it says the infamous Amityville Horror House is once again back in the news. It was put up for sale um, by the owner, <clears throat> Brian Wilson, and is asking $1.5 million. An international superstar in his own right, the house was made infamous by Jay Anson's best-selling book, The Amityville Horror. Uh, which turned out 1979 blockbuster movies. Okay, it says Wilson purchased the home back in 1997 for only 310,000, 310,000, <clears> which is 15,000 less than the previous owner. The O'Neills paid for it in 1987 with sky high prices. Da 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 da. Yeah, okay, so, um, Ronald DeFeo family members in the house while they were sleeping, the next family to move in, the Lutzes, so that they were chased out of the house by evil spirits after only 28 days. The Lutzes even passed a lie detector test on the matter, which was conducted by two renowned polygraph specialists, Chris Gagas and Michael Rice. It says, almost as soon as he arrived this week for the broker of the open house on Ocean Avenue, realtor James Smith says that he got an eerie feeling. But it wasn't until he went back into the basement of the house that he says that he got goosebumps and that the hair on the back of his neck stood up. You felt like something was there, he said. He says he asked the other two agents in the basement with him, did you feel that, he asked them. Then he says, we took off and got out of there. After the open house, Smith told Channel 4 News, I don't believe it was a hoax. He was, he will have to, we will have to wait and see how the story develops. But the one thing is for certain that Amityville Horror House is a mainstay in America culture as long as it stands and it will continue to cause nightmares. Okay, so basically this is an old article, but a lot, I'm putting it out now currently because I had it up before. Like I said, I took it down. A lot of people don't know. But back then there was a bunch of realtors that went into the basement and they said that they felt something odd. Okay, now you can read some of the comments down here. Um, right here, somebody put on September 11th, 
because um, James Smith was the realtor that went in and commented on it and also told Channel 4 News that he didn't think it was a hoax after what he felt in the basement. This is James Smith, the person mentioned in the ad, I can assure you that the accounts are real. I actually downplayed the real events to avoid the media frenzy. I would never go into that house again. Many events that have happened after that day, I believe, were a result from being in that house. And then you can read some of the comments. Now, this is the front of the article, Will Savi, Savi's Corner. If you click right here on this link, it's going to give you a real extensive story about <clears throat> them going in downtown, excuse me, going into the basement. It gives more detail about how they got cold. They felt cold, the realtors, when they went in to sell the house. And then there's another here part here that um, a lot of people don't know. Um, in August 2010, cars lined out. You can see this picture of a bunch of people outside Amityville. Um, it says that, here, let me go back to that link. It says, uh, hundreds of people were lined outside 108 Ocean Avenue, the owner of the home. At the time, Brian Wilson, he had a moving sale. Um, there was caution tape. They had bodyguard security to control everybody. They said they let in like 20 people at a time into the house and he was selling the stuff that was in his house. So probably a lot of you didn't know that either, but here's a picture of people lining up side of that. Now it is some time that this is information that a lot of you have not seen and I wanted to propel it and bring it back up now. Um, so I wanna kinda go over a couple things cause there's a couple videos I wanna show you. Um, and this is the tale and the story of two families. You have Ronald DeFeo Jr. that's slain the entire family. Um, and the $64 million question is, why did not anybody hear the six shots? Um, <clears throat> they said it was raining, none of the neighbors heard. Everybody was found on their stomach. Was it a mafia style? I even saw some, some video recently that the government had did it, that they had some kind of weapon that they can kill people through. Uh, the walls of the house and you know what I'm not gonna say that happened I'm not gonna say it didn't but the way that our world is I don't take anything off the table with all the lying and all the stories about where we are and what we're in earth being round flat whatever this is just another part of it so anyways not to get too far off the mark but um, the, a lot of people don't know that the father and the mother were shot twice so that was eight shots and um, and then we have, you have Ronald DeFeo. My belief system, as all the research that I've done on this house and different videos over the years and since I've been born, is that they said that there was, that's, it's born near some Indian ground, perhaps Indian ground. And you have to go back to the fact is, do you think there was something before? Do you think there was something there um, uh, before uh, they moved in? And I believe there was. That's my own opinion. I have nothing to base it on. I think there was something already here before the DeFeos moved in. And then you take somebody like Ronald DeFeo, who's a loose cannon, obviously an adroit liar. And all the interviews I saw, he just can't seem to tell the story. Everything's always different. You take somebody with all the negative in the family, with the fighting, and they're saying that the dad was perhaps abusive. And you take all that and you add that up with negative energy, it would have been easy to seduce him <clears throat> if you are to believe that there was something that took him over and he took his whole family out. Okay. And then you have another family that moves in, you know, what, less than a year later. There's obviously been no cleansing, any spiritual cleansing. They just left the house there. So nobody came in and did a blessing after that. Not that we're aware of, which they should have done. They should have came in and they should have done an entire spiritual cleansing of that property before the Lutz ever moved in. But we are all aware of that now, aren't we? About our houses and locations that we go to. Maybe it was unfortunate back then that people weren't doing that. So then they have this family move in, the Lutz family, just move in with some of the their furniture there. They left all the furniture, which is a whole other video for us, that all that stuff should have been taken out of there in my opinion. Um, <clears throat> and then they, you know, slept in there 
And then 28 days later, they leave because of all the incidences that we are all aware of that they went through. Now, a lot of you out there that think it's a hoax, I'm going to wipe that clean. There is, to me, it's not a hoax. There's no way there's a hoax. 28 days. Do you realize that's not even a full rent cycle? That's a full, it's not even a full mortgage payment cycle. These people moved in. They didn't have enough time to get bankrupt. Where were they going to get bankrupt? Okay. And I want to point that all out. They were there less than a month and they, they left that house. They never went back for anything. Ed and Lorraine Warren said they talked to George. Lutz, and I have some other interviews I'm going to point you guys to in this video. They didn't even bring a paper clip with them. Now, you think about moving into your house and all the belongings that you love and you're attached to. It's going to take something pretty bad for you to leave your house without taking anything and never going back. The George and Kathy Lutz, George specifically told Ed and Lorraine Warren, and for those of you who are into this, no, you can look up Ed and Lorraine Warren. They were the best paranormal investigators ever. They were the ones that opened the door for everyone pretty much to go into. They were the the pioneers of all this, really. Um, and they, they, they told George, George told them they didn't want to go back to get anything out of the house. Okay, they didn't even, even get any money really off, they, they didn't make any money off the, 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 the movie and the hoax. And all the interviews a year after George and Kathy, when they moved to the other states, I think California or another one, they were still having bad problems. Kathy was still aging in her face. They said she was levitating. They still had a hard time getting away with whatever was there. Okay. Now, <clears throat> there have been some stories. Everybody knows that George may have dabbled in the paranormal and he, you know, may have done some black magic or whatever. But you have an awful mixture here then. You have an awful mixture here then. If you have a house that's already built on Indian ground and for some reason there was something dark, you have the DeFeo family move in that's got lots of dysfunction and negativity. And then if you have a, a dark spirit or spirit entities manipulating DeFeo within that property and he knocks out his whole family, and then you have an, another formula move in whether George was involved or not. You move this family in afterward with no cleansing, no blessing on the property, leaving all their belongings in, and then you have somebody else that also deals in dark. Adding to that, if that's if we believe all that, okay? You're just creating a whirl, a circle swarm of negative entity energy, okay? So anyways, George, when they moved out, they said they had problems with dark stuff still. It wasn't all over for them. And like I said in my other videos, if you don't know, things can be attached and they don't leave. And that's, you know, more than likely what happened there. Okay, so they didn't have time to go bankrupt. They weren't even there long enough. Okay, and I have compassion for both families. Horrible what happened to the DeFeos. But also the Lutz, horrible for what they had to go through also. Okay? Some people, they don't believe it. But what if you what if you put yourself in their shoes and they really did go through that? Can you imagine having to go through that and then have the whole world think you're nuts? Well, we've all grown paranormally since then. As a world, as a people, haven't we? Um... And then, let's see, where was I? Yeah, and then nobody heard them. Nobody heard the shots. And then you have uh, Danny Lutz has my Amityville, the documentary that came out a couple years ago. You guys probably want to go ahead and take a look at that. But one of the things I wanted to share with you, one of the things before I go and close this video out is I think they should have honestly, they should have just mowed that house down. Um, I know the other video that I had up, a lot of you uh, didn't didn't like that I had said that. But honestly, I mean, everybody keeps going by it. And right here, there's Amityville Creek behind it. They could have mowed this entire home down, put a boat launch, and just called it a day. But the only other way that I think that everybody may come to peace with this experience and do the people have a right to live there without any bothering, yes and no. They bought an infamous house, so they can live there, and it's okay that we're on public property. 
But I think it's really unfortunate that we haven't found anybody buying the house that actually is paranormal in some way and would allow people to come in and a team and check things out now. Um, and or maybe even I haven't even heard if anybody's even done a healing on the property. Um, but it does need that. It needs a healing no matter how long this has gone by. So I just was somebody more open minded would do that so that we could finally put this to rest. And my opinion is I don't live in this house. I don't know anybody that lives in. I have no proof of anything, but I believe that house is not still. There is activity in that house. I would bet right now dollars to donuts on it that it is not a non-active house. And I also want people going to pray for the DeFeo family always and remember them and the Lutz family. You cannot discredit them. They went. They were the number twos. They came in and had to deal with a whole other set of circumstances. All right, everybody. Until my next video. Take it easy. Be, be safe.